Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about soldering. Um, lately I've been getting a lot of questions about what kind of um, equipment I use and I know there's a lot of people out there that want to build their own quads but are kind of hesitant to start because they've never soldered before. Um, but hopefully after watching this video um, I'll show you the basics and um, you can go build your own quad. So once you learn the basics it's actually pretty fun and it's easy. So first, let's talk about equipment. Um, I use the Weller EC2002M. Um, you probably can't find the soldering iron anymore because it's probably about 30 years old. The new one is the uh, w Weller WESD51, I believe. Um, yeah, that one, um, it's a 50 watt soldering iron, whereas this one's a 40 watt. And the new one has an auto off feature. Um, which is pretty handy because I've left mine on for hours before and, and forgot about it. But um, yeah, this one I bought for my school when uh, I graduated like 20 years ago. And they were using it for who knows how long. So this soldering iron is probably about 30 years old. So if you get a good quality sol soldering iron and um, you take good care of it, this thing will last a long time. Um, as you can see, this is the, the original soldering tip that I had when I was in school. That was like 20 years ago. You can still see it's um, still pretty pointy. And then once you heat it up, it's real shiny. So, I mean, it still works perfectly well. Um, and then next, you're going to need some solder. This is the solder I use. Um, it's a basic uh, 6040 um, 0.032 diameter rosin core. Um, 60 means it's 60% tin and 40 means it's 40% uh, lead and then 0 0.032 is the thickness, the diameter. So you can see it's pretty skinny. Um, it works good for, you know, small things like header pins and it e works equally well for big fat wires like, um, like battery, ca battery cables and stuff. And this one is a rosin core. Um, there's another kind of... Um, of solder where it's a flux core. Flux is like this acidic um, liquid that you, that helps solder melt. But I'll show you um, that you don't need any flux um, to build a quad because that flux stuff, it gets pretty messy and nasty. And then uh, you might also need some soldering wick. Wick is basically like a sponge um, that sucks up solder. Um, this is how this is handy when you like make a mistake or something you, you can use this stuff to suck up the solder and uh, You know redo your your soldering joint or whatever So that's basically the um, the basics basic equipment you need for soldering next. I'll show you the basic techniques Okay, so the basic of soldering is when you solder you want to use the soldering tip and you want to touch um, the two parts of the metal. You don't want to just touch like the pin header. Um, you don't want to touch just the header or just the pad. You want to touch it at the same time right there. And then your um, solder is going to touch at the where the metal pin and the metal pad um, are touching. So it'll melt all three together. Um, I'll try to do it. Um, showing you right here. Um, usually when I do small header pins, I usually set my um, my iron to about 675 or something. And then before you start soldering, always start with a clean tip. Um, to clean your tip, you just wipe it on your um, sponge like that until you have a nice, nice shiny tip like this. So I'm going to try to do this and film at the same time. Hopefully you can see all right, so my soldering iron's heated up to 675, and I have a clean tip. So right here, I'm going to touch the the pin and the the pad at the same time, and then tap the solder on there. Oops, that's a little too much, but you see, like that. So you'll see it doesn't take long. It doesn't take long to um, hold that. It doesn't take long to heat up the pad and the pin to hot enough to melt the solder. And if you look closely, you can see um, 
that the solder joint is nice and shiny and you have like a cone shape um, cone shape solder solder uh, joint you don't want to see like a big bubble on top and then nothing on the pad um, that way that means it's not not a not a good joint Okay, so here's a little trick that I picked up over the years on um, soldering little header pins on a board. Um, sometimes when you try to solder like a, a header pin like this and you flip it over, the header pin just falls out. Well, instead of using tape or, or rubber bands or whatever, you can just solder one pin down. I don't know if you can see this, but you're just going to solder one down. It doesn't matter if it's crooked or not. Just put a little bit of solder on there like this. And you'll see that it's still not seating um, flush. What you can do is you can lightly push up on the header pin. But make sure you're not touching the header pin that you just put the solder on because it'll get real hot. Just lightly press. When I say lightly, it's like just enough to... Um, put the pin through if there is no solder. So you're just going to lightly push up and then you're going to tap, tap, tap that little um, solder joint you just did until the solder melts and then it'll sit um, flush on the, um, on, the, on the board. And then from there, um, all the pins are stuck. You can just go ahead and solder the rest. So that's a quick little way to, to do it without using tape or whatever to um, solder the pins. So here I'm just going to show you how I use the solder wick to um, change the jumper on this OS Dodgy board from the 12 volt to the, um, the direct to battery. So what I like to do is um, the, the, solder, the wick I use is a 2.2 millimeter wick. So what I like to do is um, when I do this, I, I usually just tap the solder really quick just to kind of preheat it. And then um, you put the wick over the solder joint and then you just apply pressure until the solder melts and sucks up onto the wick. You can see it right there. And when you take it off, it's done. So next, I'm going to show you how I solder, um, say, an ESC on a power distribution board. Um, with this kind of soldering, um, it's best to pre-tin the pad and the wires before you um, solder them together. Whereas the other kind of soldering, the, the through the hole type, where you solder um, like pin headers on an A32, you don't need to uh, pre-tin, but on this kind, this type of soldering, it's best to pre-tin. So here I'm uh, getting ready to mount the ESC on the power, distribu power distribution board. So first I'm going to um, tin the pad and the ESC before I solder it. So when you tin the pad, I usually like to turn my soldering iron up to about 750 to 775 um, to do this because these are pretty big jobs. So what you do is you want to heat the pad and then touch the solder on, onto the pad because you want a good bond. You don't want to just melt solder and drip it onto the um, power distribution board. If you do that you won't get a good bond. So. That's it for the uh, power distribution board. And then the same thing for the when you're tinning the wires. You want to heat up the wire um, so that it'll accept the, the, the solder. You basically want to coat the whole, all the strands of wire in solder, just like that. Okay, so now that I have both the pad and um, wire tinned, I'm ready to uh, solder. So make sure you clean off your tip. And then um, the way I like to do it is I like to use this little sharp um, plier thingies and hold the, the, the wire here and then touch the, the pad and the wire at the same time so they'll both melt. Um, I've seen a lot of people where they match the... Um, match the soldering iron on top of the wire but what happens if you do that is once the, um, the solder melts the wire becomes like spread out and frayed it can get real messy that way so I like to do it this way hopefully I can 
film and do this at the same time it's pretty difficult like this you'll see it start melting and then let go and then um, you want to try not to move the solder um, the wire before the um, the solder has a chance to cool off I'll try to show you again here and it's really difficult trying to film and uh, do this at the same time <laughs> You're melting the solder, and I found what helps is um, sometimes you get a stubborn joint. Um, what helps is if you melt one of them and then touch it to the other, because that way it kind of spreads the heat and um, makes the solder melt really quickly. And then if you want to make it even more flat, you can lightly press on the wire here, not here, because if you press here, the wires the, they're gonna get like really flat and frayed out. So you want to press here and then heat it up at the same time until it both melts and then you have a nice flat joint. So you can see here that the uh, solder joint is uh, nice and shiny and it's real smooth. Um, make sure it's, it's shiny like this and smooth. If you have like a dull looking solder joint and that's real bumpy that means it's a cold joint. Um, you you want to redo that because the, the joint could fall apart when you're flying. And that'll be a bad thing. So the next kind of soldering I'm going to show you is soldering motor wire onto an ESC. Uh, this is the same concept. You want to heat the pad and the wire at the same time so the, the solder will bond together nicely. So what I like to do is I like to heat up the pad first and then bring the wire into there. I find that way um, it um, it helps melt the solder a lot faster. See like that, the joint is like real dull and bumpy looking. That's a bad joint. That means the uh, the solder and the wire didn't um, it didn't melt. Ugh, this is really hard to do while you're filming at the same time. So you can see the solder joint is nice and smooth and shiny. So that means it's a good joint, it's good to go. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how I solder small wires onto pads. Like here I'm just going to solder this little signal wire onto the ESC. This is the same concept. Uh, make sure your um, pad and your wire are pre-tinned. And what I like to do is I like to heat up the pad until the solder is uh, melted and then I'll just push this wire in there. Like this. That's all you need to do for um, small wires like this because um, if you try to do it where you put the wire on top and then mash it together what happens is when the solder melts that wire becomes flat and gets real messy and then sometimes it touches the pads next to it. So I hope you found this um, my little post to educational and uh, helpful. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.